It's becoming something of a 4th of July tradition for me to make a video related to the Declaration of Independence. One year ago, I was actually in London and I just went through the city at various places reading the Declaration of Independence, or reciting it rather, in front of crowds of Londoners who may have had no idea what was going on or, at worst, might have found me to be a little bit obnoxious. So this year I'm going to try a new approach, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show some solidarity with our departed brethren in Britain, and we're going to talk about the original Brexiters, July 4th, 1776. We've seen some memes go around, but I don't know of anybody that's really tried to put some substance to it. So if we're going to think about the Declaration of Independence as the original Brexit, where would we go with that? Well, first of all, a lot of people thought that these guys were crazy, all right? That they were just nuts. And the same thing last week when people were like, oh my goodness, has Britain gone crazy? I mean, does the world's fifth largest economy think that they could actually survive on their own as an independent country? And then you've heard a lot of people accusing those who voted for Brexit of being racist. Well, a lot of people say the same thing about our founding fathers. That's probably because our founding fathers were racist. But that was 200 years ago. Moving on. The vote was pretty close. Only 52% of those who voted voted for Brexit. And a lot of people didn't vote. Not so different than the American Revolution. Not everyone was into it. In fact, it took us a little while to invoke Article 50, so to speak. People started shooting each other in April of 1775, and the Declaration of Independence was not signed until July of 1776. That is a 15-month interval, and we see that there is going to be a very long process with this Brexit. Fortunately, it has not yet gone to the point of revolutionary violence or anything like that. But when you look back at the American Revolution, about 40 to 45 percent of colonists favored independence, whereas there were about 20 percent who were loyalists or, as they called them at the time, Tories on the British side, who were loyal to the British Empire. And then you had the inevitable group of people who just didn't care, all right, the remainder, the non-voters, and all of that kind of stuff. And there was also some regionalism to both of these votes, okay? You think about why did it take so long for the Declaration of Independence to be signed? Well, there was a lot of resistance in the middle colonies, especially New York, which had a very high proportion of Tory loyalists. Now, what we might say about New York during the time of the American Revolution, we could say about Scotland today. Scotland is, a, you know, it's hard for me to just say Scotland, you know, it's like, Scot I gotta say Scotland, you know, and, and that sort of thing, but, but Scotland only, oh, what am I talking about? Scotland, only 38% voted for Brexit, 62% of Scots favoring staying in the EU, and of course there's talk now about another independence referendum. So, Brexit has caused some divisions, so did the American Revolution. The American Revolution also caused a great deal of short-term economic turmoil. At the time, the colonists were printing out all of these paper notes known as Continentals. And when something was worthless, one way to call something worthless was to say that it was not worth a Continental. And we've seen a lot of fluctuation in markets over the past week or so, especially with the pound uh, going back and forth, mostly downward since Brexit. But at the same time, markets generally don't favor instability, all right? Markets like for things to keep how they're going. So a lot of people think that Britain leaving the EU has been an act of national suicide or something like that, which a lot of people probably thought at the time that those who were signing the Declaration of Independence were in fact signing their own death warrants. But the United States turned out all right. And that's what I wanna tell my friends over in the UK is that no matter what, you're going to be okay.
you've got a very great economy. You'll keep trading with Europe. Look at the American Revolution. Guess who our number one trading partner was within a few years after the American Revolution? It was you, Britain. And that's because at the end of the day, we needed each other. And while there's going to be some brinkmanship between the UK and the EU and all of that kind of stuff, at the end of the day, all right, they're like... They're like Jon Snow and Melisandre, you know? And it's just like, at the end of the day, I mean, they, they need each other, okay? I mean, you think you don't need her, but you need her, Jon Snow. You know nothing, Jon Snow, all right? And that's that's just, just the thing, you know? And it may not seem like that, uh, you know, right now or at the present time, but they need each other. That was for you, Haley. So the thing is, you're going to be okay. The United States was okay. And what the United States and the UK share is that they're great nations. And as I celebrate America today, it is a pleasure one year after reciting the Declaration of Independence in your capital to be able to turn around and show a bit of solidarity and offer a word of encouragement. Subscribe if you haven't already. TomRitchie.net, Twitter, Instagram, all of that good stuff. It's always a pleasure.